Hello again everyone, happy Tuesday, and this is Coordinator's Choice Day 3. I thought we'd do something a little different today. I decided to bring you along for my favorite hobby, which is bug watching. Disclaimer, I am not an expert, nor am I an actual entomologist. I'm just someone who really likes things that crawl and fly and stuff. So, let's get started. Plus, I'll be sharing a couple tips and tricks in lieu of not having the best video camera to actually be able to see the millions of things flying through the air right now. <laughs> uh, so, at the very least, it should be educational, but I'll try and find whatever I can. Now, some of you may be thinking, but Connor, bugs are gross and creepy. And while I wholeheartedly disagree with you, I totally understand why. But really, bug watching is more than just looking at creepy things that eat other things and live in the soil and stuff. It's about walking slow and noticing the little things. Like, even if it's not a bug, see all these little dots on the leaves? I have no bloody clue what they are, but how cool is that? Uh, they're probably fungus. <laughs> And other things, like, like this little thing over here. What's Hello. that? I think it's Travis. Now I heard a buzzing sound, which usually means a little friend. We have lots and lots and lots of different kinds of bees, other than honeybees. We have cutter bees, digger bees, carpenter bees, and most of them, interestingly enough, are solitary. They either dig into old stumps or into the ground to overwinter, and they live pretty much alone for most of their lives. Oh. <laughs> Man, this is hard to film. Now, one good trick to bug hunting is walking slow. Even if most insects can't technically see you, they can sense motion really well because that's how they look for predators. They sense differences between light and dark. And I mean, in case of flies, for example, the little hairs on their legs, they just, they feel air currents and when it changes really suddenly they're like, oh, something's after me, and then they fly away. Um, so it's always good to just stroll, you know, enjoy the day, take in the air, the sights, the sounds, the sun. It's a gorgeous day today. Birds are singing, the sun is shining, and there's not a lot of wind, and it's very warm and dry. Uh, actually, it's pretty humid today. Anyway, great conditions for what we're doing. Another good trick I find really helps is if you're in a spot where you just can't seem to find anything or nothing interesting flies by, what I like to do is just 
stand in one spot and see what I can see, what little details. Another thing I've been noticing today is how many damselflies are out. They just came out this week. Um, I saw a lot of uh, kind of older damselfly larvae in the lake over there uh, last week. And I like these ones because they're bright blue and the females are like kind of silvery gray. You might be like, Connor, what is a damselfly? Well, they look like dragonflies, but there's a couple key differences. When a dragonfly sits, uh, you'll notice its wings go out to the side, uh, and they tend to be a lot thicker and have a rounder face. Damselflies have kind of like two big bulbous eyes sticking out on the either on either side. Uh, they're a lot more delicate, they're kind of more streamlined looking, and they have their wings pressed to their backs. I don't know what these beetles are. They're kind of cool. Most of them have kind of like greenish wing cover. Well, these ones are different actually. Anyway, point is, uh, I accidentally touched one of these flowers and then all the beetles on, on this one just kind of fell off. Quite a common defense mechanism for it, some insects that live in high bushes or the canopy. Uh, even if they might not be avid flyers, they can kind of just let go and they'll fall to the ground, hopefully into safety. But, uh, you know, it's a jungle down here. Speaking of which, this is a great place to look for ground spiders. Uh, centipedes, lots of other predatory insects, they love leaf litter because the leaf litter is where a lot of interesting stuff happens. All kinds of stuff all crawls through here, feeding off the uh, decomposing plant matter coming down from the canopy. Sit still, please, I'm begging you. Look at these little fungal growths. I don't know what they are, but they sure are bright. The tiny little plants growing up from the rotting log. It's all in the details. You never know what you'll find. The only downside to being a bugster, as Mr. John Acorn would put it, is uh, with your eyes to the ground all the time, you might get a couple spider webs in your face. The only insects that have stingers are female, because the stinger uh, actually evolved from a structure called the ovipositor, which was is like a long tube on the end of the abdomen used for, uh, well, laying eggs, really. Ugh. For those few of you who actually do like spiders, I'm sure I don't have to tell you this, but one good trick is to walk facing the sun, because spider silk is very easy to spot, well, around here because it's dirty and full of poplar fluff, but uh, fresh silk will glint in the wind, so it's a lot easier to see.
Okay, so if you recall those beetles that I mentioned before, watch what happens when I disturb the flower. Oh, this is not the same one. Okay, that's awkward. Now when you're out and about, it's not the worst idea to keep an eye where you're walking. Beyond the obvious reasons like running into trees and stuff, but mostly because you never know when you might see like a twitch of movement, like a centipede slinking into the leaf litter, or a ground beetle crawling across your path in, the, in search for, like, grubs or other bugs to eat. That is a huge mushroom. Wow, look at the size of that thing! It's crazy! Speaking of keeping your eyes to the ground, I'm, uh, just under the arc here. I noticed all these black dots. I was like, that's a lot of poop. But then, upon closer inspection, every single one of these is a slug. Uh, you can see particularly with this one, it's, you can see its trail. It rained last night, so they probably all crawled out here and just, you know, dried up. You can see the trails over there. Sucks to be them, I guess, but I thought that was Maybe morbid, but interesting, if nothing else. Now, weeks ago, I noticed something interesting over by the Gaga Ball Pit here. And it was in this tree, we had green leaves that were curled. Now, why do you think a green leaf that isn't dead would be curled? Well, if you're First answer was like, hey, this is a bug video. Maybe it's bugs. You know, good instincts on you. You can see here, very closely, see those like little white lines that I can't focus on with the camera? <laughs> uh, that is silk of some sort. And I never did find out what's in here, but there's lots of little black things living in there. And Annika actually noticed that woodpeckers were trying to get into these curled leaves. If you look closely, you can see a bunch of them. So something's nesting in this tree. But yeah. Throw it up in the comments if you uh, know it's doing this. I'd like to find out myself. <laughs> Some of you might be like, okay, I'm interested in this stuff. Uh, but it's a huge topic, and bugs are so wild and diverse, I have no idea where to start. I have this for you. So, by the way, this is not a sponsored video. Um, this book is kind of what got it all started for me. It's called Bugs of Alberta by John Acorn, who some of us in Alberta may know as John Acorn the Nature Nut. Uh, he still lives up in Edmonton, actually. Uh, and Ian Sheldon. And these guys wrote kind of like a beginner's field guide to like all of Alberta's most interesting insects. It's far from comprehensive, but it's really, really good uh, for those of you just like wanting to get the general gist of like the creepy crawlies that live in our super awesome province. Um, it's good for like, I mean, <laughs> We saw one of these today. I tried to film it. It was like all over the place. This is a really good book. It gives you an introduction to like anatomy, uh, habitats, distribution, and it's written with like some entertaining flair. So if uh, you want to get started, I really recommend this book. Uh, you can get it off the internet. I don't know. I'm not a salesman, but uh, yeah. I think that's all I can actually film on this camera today, unfortunately. I'm next. I want to do this again with a better camera. Catch Annika tomorrow for her next segment in the wilderness survival training for shelter building. Uh, yeah, and I'll see you next week. Who knows what we're going to do. It's coordinator's choice. Uh, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.